Hey, what's up, Internet world? Welcome to Powerverse. I am your host, the Golden Mike from the North, Balamau Power. Now, this podcast was created in response to our pivot against the pandemic COVID-19 impacts. Here, we get to explore creative arts businesses, empowering and inspiring stories from our communities of First Nations people across the country. So I hope you enjoy these episodes. And like we always say here at Powerverse, stay inspired, stay empowered, and stay connected. That's all. Hey, what up, people out there in the internet world? Welcome to Powerverse. I'm your host, the Golden Mike from the North, Balamau Power, and we're broadcasting live here from Gimui Country. Uh, I like to show respect and pay acknowledgement to the traditional custodians of this um, this beautiful place here that we broadcast upon. Uh, I want to say acknowledgement to Bulumbaja for allowing us to be in here and broadcasting from this studio uh, here for Powerverse. And for those who are tuning in. I want to say, you know, welcome, welcome to Powerverse. If this is your first episode, you're in for a treat. Now, I want to introduce this brother, my guest today, um, a someone I respect, you know, dearly, and he's been uh, not only a, a leader that I know of, you know, I met him in a short while, but he's a leader and a, a mentor to me right now. So, I'm going to introduce Mr. Chris Anderson. Thank you for being on the program, Alan. Thank you, thank you. Um, firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners where we meet here today. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you, my brother, for inviting me today and <laughs> catch up and have a yarn. We, we, uh, today's a little bit different, having a bit of a yarn with yeah. uh, some cameras in front of us and stuff like that, but uh, it's always always great to catch up. Too good. And I know you're someone from always behind the scenes, never in front of the scenes, so yeah. it's great to have you here. Like a shadow. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's good to get out and get out and have a have a go and see what's, it, what's out there as well and be seen as well. Yes, so yes. Thank you very much. Well, no worries, my brother. And you, um, so, as we do here always, we like to get some, um, you know, our guests to uh, introduce themselves cultural way and their connection yes. and their mob. So, can you do that first, please? So, my my history is that I'm, I'm the youngest of twelve in my family. Uh, so I'm part of the Gungari mob, west of Brisbane, out near Mitchell Way. Uh, Fifty three, still learning where I come from. So that's still part of my journey. Uh, my, my mother's passed on, so there's lots of things that I'm still learning in, in part of my journey, um, part of my life. I never knew who my father was. Mm. Um, apparently he was from Cuba, so lots of things I'm still from learning. So Cuba? Cuba. Cuba. So uh, some people say that's maybe where I get my temper from, but I, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm pretty temperament. Uh, but interesting uh, mix of blood, uh, but I, I suppose uh, I have a lot, of, lot to thank for my mother. Uh, uh, she was a, an artist. If you look in the book Brisbane Blacks, you see mum in there painting. Um, yep. They called her class as a second name of Jira. Um, she had a lot of accomplishments in her life, and uh, I don't think you know a lot of it was forgotten about. And uh, I haven't forgotten about it. I, yes. I, she's been a, someone, uh, obviously, still today, um, I, in some ways, uh, achieving some of the goals in my life that it's. it's I know Mum's not here, but she's. Mm. I've got a picture of her at home. She's always following me. I always get that sense. So, but uh, life is uh, is a continuous journey. Um, you, got, you know, lots. Of, I've got three other brothers, uh, eight sisters. Uh, two have passed on from the family. Oh. But uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's like all families. We all don't get along at times. <laughs> uh, millions of nieces and nephews. I don't have children myself, which is people find strange as, a, as an indigenous person, but I can tell you I've got a million nieces and nephews and it's, they're, they're, they're just as kids to me as, yeah. as family. So that's part of that, you know, cultural way, what we do. And I'll say, you know, I've got 40 year old nephews still follow me around wherever I travel, but uh, I'm always there for them as well. So yeah, yeah that's close, close to my heart. That's, well, kinship is a big part of our culture, um, and you know, family, um, extended family, we always, uh, uh, you know, hold them dear and close. Um, sometimes, yes. we, like you said, we don't all get along. Yes. But that's uh, as 
not only First Nations people, but you know, leaders in our community, that's what we're about. You know, we have to be able to um, lead the community and yeah. love the people who don't love us sometimes. You know how it is. That's right. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, a lot of their friends, uh, they, they, you know, non Indigenous young fellows that come around and, you know, they always call me uncle and, yep. you know, it's, it's like an extended black uncle in their life. <laughs> uh, it's funny, but, uh, it, you know, that's in the work and what I do and uh, it, that, that's comes natural part of it so that's yes you, you, you don't escape that um, at the end of the day whether it's someone I know or don't know or it's family or not it's about role modeling so I'm yes. very conscious around that how I act and what I do yes yes and uh, we'll get into yep. some of the like you know Certainly. the things that you do in life um, you know your leadership businesses you know organizations that you work with but I want to start off with um, you growing up, you know, being the youngest of 12, you said? Yes. 12, um, growing up uh, in a time where, you know, the, the color of your skin really did um, uh, you know, position you where you are in life. And this your journey of your upbringing and things that you've experienced. Yeah, so a l interesting journey. I grew up in Brisbane, so uh, yeah. I won't say the number, but Lawn Street, Holland Park. Uh, I, I still, still today, I still... I can still picture the house. Even when I go to Brisbane, I, I drive past that house. I drive past where I used to grow up. I drive past the old places where I first started work, and yeah. um, not for negative reasons. I, I just drive past, and it, it sort of it, it sort of reminds me where I've come from. Uh, yes. It, it, don't get me wrong. That's all important as part of my life journey. But uh, part of that, you know, going to going to school, and you know. Been taken away. I grew up in the, you know, in the the foster care, mm. you know, sector and all that. Been taken away at, a, at an early age. Uh, a lot of it I could never figure out in life, and I, you know, a lot of that I still carry today. But I, I don't let it stop me from what I'm doing. But you know, mum, my mother was always there. Uh, I, you know, it's I, I, I never hated it for it, or never. Um, I only got one mother. But as part of that, I think it's it's all part of the life lessons, and mm. um, you know, there's there's members of my family that I you know were there for me. I I, I, I take that, but um, I, I you know, it's grew up around the streets of Brisbane. That was my you know living off the streets. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hard times. Uh, you know, with our, our our fun was you know it's a bit like young people today. You know, I really understand you know some of the challenges they go through. Yeah. We used to we used to have lots of interesting fun getting chased by the police on a Friday <laughs> night up Queen Street <laughs> Mall in Brisbane. <laughs> uh, a lot of people used to do some rap dancing up in the small and you know did all those silly things, did some stealing, all those sorts of things. But that was you know it was it was part of learning um, mm. and growing up through that age at at that early age and then I think. Um, where things changed, I call them turning points in your life, and yes. it's a big one for me. It started way, way back then. Uh, it, you know, I was, uh, you know, stealing, and a detective said to me one night at CIB unit in Wollongabba, I was sleeping yep. on the floor, said to me, "When you turn 16, you'll have a record." I can re never remember that gentleman's name, but that was uh, probably one of the first turning points in my life. Yeah. After that, it changed me. Yeah. Then I thought, you know, I need to do something different. So, but they're my own little insights in my head that I carry. That, you know, I suppose listening to advice, I think that's mm. something I've learned over, the, over over the course of my life. People are talking to you. What it, what's absorbing in your head and what and what's not. So yes. But you know, I'm 53. I'm here today. Yeah. Uh, wow. A lot of roads in between. Uh, you know, but uh, did all sorts of things in my life. I yes. Worked, you know, started at a factory, sweeping floors. Two years. You know. Wow. Nine years later, I was you know in charge of thirty people there. Did lots of things, and I moved from. You know, I gave one hundred and ten percent to everything I did, and yes. You know, even if it was just sweeping a floor, um, you make it clean. You polish the floor. You do everything. Yes. That, um, you know, one of the things I I, I had mentors and role models that I didn't realise what that terminology meant at that point. Mm, yes. Uh, but now, today, I'm thinking, they actually showed me a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I, if I could go and see them today, I would thank them. Yes. I would thank them dearly. But uh, that, 
I suppose, built work ethic. And I, I tell that to my own nieces and nephews, work ethic. It's a big one. Yes. Work ethic is whether it's at home or anything you do in life. Uh, it may not be your dream job. It may not be your dream ideal thing, situation. But it's a means to an end. It's, it's, it's part of that. Uh, and it builds resilience, builds character. Um, that's all build of design of you yourself before you even um, where you want to get. And yes. I think that, that builds just long term sustainability. Done all sorts of different jobs, done all di different things in my life. Uh, but like I said, that's all part of the makeup, it's all part of the DNA of who Chris Anderson is. Yes, uh, wow. Because a lot of people say, you know, how did it all start? Where did you come from? What do you do? Um, it's 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 hard. Maybe if I've got a whiteboard and a picture, I can draw lots of things instead of people. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm I'm certainly not complicated in any means. I like simple things. I like uh, I just like keeping things very simple, yes. very quiet. I like to stay under the radar. Yeah. So, that's what I've learned from you. I'm like, you're, you're, very, you're someone who speaks, very passionate. You're a leader and driver in the community. But like you said, you're the shadow. You stay behind the scenes and everything. Yeah. And now, thank you for sharing that story. Um, you know, that part of the background, I think, uh, I, I've always learned that it's pinnacle. The first 12 years of your life will shape whatever you become in the future. Um, and, you know, having similar backgrounds, growing up in that type of state. I mean, but you were in a different generation who was, there were really no... Um, support services around there at that time uh, and then that crucible moment that ch turning point that you said where that officer saying that stuff that it um, was a de de detective, detective saying that to you yeah. um, changed your direction and not many young people I, like I know a lot of young people don't have that um, uh, that mindset or that that way of thinking where you can make understanding that we have choices to turn the direction and then growing up doing everything that you did just to get where you are now um, I'm interested I want to hear from you when was that point um, we'll, we'll go to all the turning points when was that point where you knew that you could create your path and your destiny I, I think the learning was that I was sick and tired of being sick and tired yeah I think that's a terminology I've used for a long time uh, but I think it was that you know, I, I suppose it's, it wasn't. I wasn't happy where I was. Uh, you know, it was it was it was a relationship. It was it was about. You know, I, I either had to make it. I I, I had to. I was always self determined. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have a lot of people around me to come up and say, you know, you want a hand or stuff like that. I I had to listen a lot, uh, and had to really think: Is this where I want to be? What do I want to do? It's strange, but I've always had entrepreneurial thinking, even yes. at an early age. Yep. I always go back to selling papers when yeah. Milton, Milton Road and Holland uh, and Milton, selling papers enough probably to buy a custard tart and an apple. Um, get up at five o'clock, go sell those papers. So, always sort of figured that you know if you want to go get something, you're going to have to go and do it. Yes. Uh, and I and I suppose that from simple humble beginnings like that, and to think about how how do I do something. I was always, always not afraid to do something different, mm. uh, and still today, you know, like learn something new. What does that look like? Uh, what's the worst that could happen? Yes. You know, okay, I fail. Okay, right. Is is it the end of the world? No, it's not. Mm. Uh, at least I've had a go. Yes. You know, something I still am. Young people say, so have a go. What's yeah. the worst that could happen? Put that in your mind. But I, I think that. If I wanted to go get something, I had to chase it. But uh, you know, just hanging around different people—that's that was one of the big influences. Hang around. You know, you are who you hang around. I was, you yes. Know, I learned lots of things. Language was—it's what you, you know, what you think is how you speak. What you speak is what you do. So I think that uh, as quiet, I'm, I, I can be very quiet in a room. But it's—it's it's like listening. I always say, God gave us two ears and one mouth. <laughs> yes. It's listening, then, but it's what you do with that information. Um, mm -hmm. So to people, you know, information is always free. Advice is always free, but it's what you do with it. And I think that I've learnt the the art form of how to, you know, grab that information and turn it into something that I can make sense out of. What is it? What does it look like in my life? More importantly, what does it look like around for people around me? Yes. And how do I display that moving forward? So it's it's not easy. It's it's not no. easy. Yeah, that's true. 
Now, I, I was, thank you for sharing that. That, that was deep and it's true. Um, that, that, I remember from very young, that advice of, you know, you should sit and listen. Uh, I didn't, I think these come from the, uh, the previous generations. I know my generation, but I see the younger generation now, they, they have this um, syndrome where they know everything simply because they're connected to the web, the internet, and you giving advice, it, it has to take them to go through traumatic events before they actually understand that you should listen to people before you because you will learn a great lot and it will save you years of your life. So that information, that what you just shared was, it was deep and um, I resonated with that very, like, you know, deeply. Um, I want to take it to now a younger Chris as a, as a man. Now, when you started getting in, you had the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset. Um, you're working for yourself now. When was it that, that you realized that um, the work that you do actually impacts on your community? I, I think that's probably when the hair started getting a bit greyer. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I think that it comes with that is wisdom. Yes. Uh, then I think that that's where you start uh, churning that information and what you're learning into a lot more sense. Yes. I think at that point, then I'll start to think that there's only so long I'm on this planet for. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's where I started, okay, how do I speed things up? Then I, I think that was another turning point in my life. Yes. How do I turn that around and speed that up? Uh, but I think that from the more mature learnings around, I'm a lot more mindful that people are watching me. What yes. are they? What are they seeing me? What am I? What am I showing out there? Not just to family or to friends or the community or young people. You know, when I look in the mirror, am I happy with what I see? Mm. Can I go to bed at night thinking that yes, I, I, my ethics, my values, um, what I believe in, my passion, uh, and I think from there is then I, I think taking on more different things. I've, I've, I've you know, I went to uni, you know, one of the things I went to uni, I didn't know how to use a computer till I was 33. Uh, yeah. You know, back then, I think it was about 45 of us in a class. I, what I, were you studying? Uh, Diploma of Community Management. Going okay. to Sydney, no idea what an email was, didn't even know what it was. Felt you like ask it. you, oh, which, which in Sydney? I went to uh, um, uh, um, Dunmore Lang, so into a uh, university in Sydney, uh, North Ride. I'll think of the name, it'll come up to me. It's been okay. But part of that is that, you know, what am I sitting here? Sitting in the class, everyone's doing typing and sending emails, and I'm thinking, I felt like the most dumbest in the class. Um, but Macquarie University was well. I went. Macquarie, yes. yes. But uh, it, it's funny, you know, out of the group that went through after three years, I was one of, I was one of the ones that uh, graduated. Wow. Uh, so I think little goals in my life, achieving things that I never thought I could yes. do. Yes. Uh, and I think that's sort of proven to me that, yes, I, okay, maybe I'm a little bit wiser and smarter than what I thought. But as part of that, that was a month's time when I was uh, moving, changing jobs. I was in a government job, then I was going out. Uh, uh, a sister and I had a, we had a coffee shop, we were starting our own consultancy businesses. Uh, we never had mentors. We, you know, I, yeah. I didn't know what that looked like. Yep. Uh, people thought I was insane leaving a good government job. Uh, going out, I moved back to Brisbane, different lifestyle. You, you, business is not easy. You have, to, yes. you, you have to get up and you have to make things happen, create things. Absolutely. Uh, so that was a, a, another good lesson to, to say, hey, if you want something, go and get it. Yes. Uh, but you have to work hard. Uh, yes. And uh, part of that, then part of that journey was then venturing into other things, the uh, Harvard Business Club of Australia. I was invited to, to attend wow. that in um, Sydney. So you say the Harvard Business Club of Australia. Yeah. Okay. So wow. That, that okay. Was, um, I've heard of them, but that, that's like an alumni that you kind of aspire and strive to be. Is it, it is. still around? It, I, I don't know if it still runs here. I, it was uh, what they call the centricity of marketing. So that yes. was ran, and uh, there was five Indigenous people. That was uh, thanks to Henrietta. Uh, so yes. Oh, yes. Really. Yes. So. Uh, Aunt Henrietta. Um, huh? And uh, part of that was uh, it was. 75 people uh, it was in a setup as a lecture room two dynamic yes. dynamic lecturers from Harvard Business School in Boston Wow uh, came out and delivered that and uh, still today and I was telling Henrietta this not long ago that still today the notes and the mm. books and the learnings from mm -hmm. that that was back in 2000 I believe maybe six yes 
the learnings from that, I still use those same principles in every as, uh, facet of business or life and life, everything yeah. what I do today. So I, I, I suppose that taking those learnings and carrying them, so, so do people, I've got like an invisible bag of tricks and learnings yes. and tools and yes. everything else and, and take that along. But from there there's been, yes, there's there's been businesses, some have come and gone, some have, have continued, some haven't. Uh, but it, it's continuing that journey. But I, I think along the way, the most important thing, it's inspired a lot of other people. Yes. I don't know if they look at me and say, hey, how do you do it? Um, if, if that's what it takes. Uh, and inspiring a lot, not just Indigenous people, but just people to say, you know, you had a go. How yes. Did, how did you do it? Uh, that was always the question. How do you do it? it? Yes. I mean, that's a powerful lesson, just having a go. Like, um, I remember that there's the saying that I learned. I can't say, remember who told me it, but it was um, they were saying the moment that you don't try, you've already defeated That's yourself. Right. That's right. You know, you have to try. Failure is a part of the process. And when people now, I've learned this terminology um, from going through this this um, other alumni that I'm um, with called Money and You. We don't call it failure. We call them learning experiences. These learning experiences give you life lessons that you'll carry with you. And like you said, a bag of tricks or the bag of tools, we say, like, you know, walking through life, it, it inspires people but without you even knowing. Now, there's so much way we can go with all this stuff. That's why, um, I, I, like, what people don't know that power, before Power was started, uh, Chris and I, we were talking about uh, creating podcasts. I mean, he was already on the same wavelength. And we were already there too. Um, so everybody, I'm talking to Dane at the back here. We were already there talking um, about putting, it was started as Powercast. Uh, and you came to the launch when we had the first night of Boom Bajar. And just making it happen. Like, no, no taking an idea, formulating it, even if it's a, a structure where you don't know where it goes, um, just doing it, having a go and see where it lands. Right. And we're now 20, 23 episodes, Nick? Nick? 20, 23 episodes in, global, um, and you know, networks are wanting to have our content on the program. And just from that, just having a go, what you said. Now, like I said, we're gonna have, we, we took that, sorry, this is where I was going with it. We were talking about starting our own podcast, That's which right. I think we're going to start, yes. and we need to That's sit here because there's so much life lessons that I believe you will share that are um, just invaluable. Like, yo, you say 53, there's a lot of things we could talk about and we could spend hours on one of those points That's in your right. life uh, and um, just deliver so much value to our people. Now, I'm gonna take it from, because I wanted to stay at university, I did the same thing. I went to University of Southern Queensland in Toowoomba. I never graduated because um, I went there to study, study mechanical engineering. I ended up found, found, finding sound engineering, which took me to Brisbane, and that's why I went through the music route, uh, and then started um, my music business then. Uh, and that stems from being a young age, I started crayfishing. Like I was around 11, 12 years old, being in that industry, uh, taught me how to be entrepreneurial. So we're gonna take it out from the university and go to where you started your first business. Not knowing, no mentors, how did that happen and what was that business? So I think the first venture was uh, my sister and I, so uh, was our first coffee shop in Tableland. So part yep. of that is, it's strange, but uh, it, even at work, we get a little coffee machine there. And I think what, what year was this? This was back in 2003. 2003, yeah. So we found an old shop, and part of that was taking that old shop, paint it, decorate it, you know. We, a lot of research, going to other coffee shops and cafes and see what they do. and. Uh, self research and part of that was looking at it was always what does that look like what yes. what would it like to own a business something uh, what would it like to own a business and, 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 and you know indigenous or not but just to own a business uh, lots and lots and tons of learning from that around yes. that people aren't lining up at the door to come and, and help you or do all those sorts of things so we, we, we got through that. Um, the big learnings from that was that, you know, I, I was still working full time. My sister was running shop. I used to love going up on Saturdays. Yeah. It was a good way to end that week to go up and yes. spend Saturday mornings up there. I think the big thing was that be proud. That yes. We, we took something from nothing, an old video shop that was just laying there dormant and turned it into... <laughs> it's a video shop. 
But people, if you younger generation out there, if you don't know what videos are, is these <laughs> black little boxes that you used to put in this thing called VCRs. I know. <laughs> but anyway, so we, yeah. we actually call it out the ages right now. That's showing my age, isn't it? <laughs> Um, we'll, we'll put an image, make sure we put an image of what a video we see yeah. at a VCR, VCR, an old VCR. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was, an, that was an empty building, we turned that into a, uh, a place and uh, it, was, it, was, it was a place, well, a meeting place, so it was mm. for anyone to come there. But uh, part of that was um, from there then we, we looked at other things and we looked at how do we share this with yes. other people. Uh, then we did uh, black business consultancy. Then from there, wow, then, we, okay. then we took that. Then While we, you had the coffee shop, I think we at the back, at the end of the coffee shop. So we took a took a shop and turned it around. And then I think that within that eleven months, we sold it. Wow, okay. Then I think that what was the drivers that we we sort of parted our ways a bit. Then we come back together and said, let's go back and do the next one again from nothing. Yes, going back to second hand stuff, uh, everything. Uh, I think even still today, if you go to that shop up there, some of the old it's furniture, it, the coffee shop is still there, it's changed names, but some of the old furnishing we made and the old flipped over and put wheels and just put, you know, there was old video benches and some of that still sits there. And I thought, wow. well, I often go in there and have a coffee and, th and reflect on, this is where that we come time. from. Yes. Yep. Uh, and I think that's important, go back and see where you've yes. come from, that they were important times there were the massive turning points in your life uh, then from there we went into consultancy and then we started doing enterprise workshops and yes doing all sorts of things and the sister went off doing uh, the leadership conferences for uh, facts here back then yes the women's leadership program and that and we sort of parted our ways and I, I sort of went back into the employment world and did all sorts of things always still had my dreams yeah but they were sort of just parked a bit and I parked them a bit but part of that is, what is the next venture? What is the next venture? Yes. And build from there. Uh, so it's always that lens out there, then, which is sort of, I, I think one of the key learnings is that when I left, well, I was working for government, what I achieved in the first three to six months, I thought, imagine what you can do in three to six years in this. Yes. And I thought that really expanded my thinking. This is achievable. I can tell you lots of things, a lot of knockers. A lot of a lot of people saying I thought it was insane leaving. That's important, actually. That, that part, it. that part is I think the most important because you get. The, I remember starting out when we did the music stuff. The mo the people that doubted us the most, and yes. I think it, it, it fueled the fire yes. to say, okay, you don't dictate my life. I will show you. And um, it's important now these days. They they look forward to the things that we are doing every time. Every time you get Facebook messages and things like, when's the next album dropping or when's the next yeah. tour and stuff like that. But that I, I want to really focus on that area because there are things in business. Like I said, we're gonna have to start a podcast. And can we make a note? We have to go to um, that coffee shop to do an episode there, so we can talk about that. Yes, that'd be fantastic. People these days. They, they think entrepreneurship is sexy. It's just a title. The hardship in business is what makes makes it sure. what it is. I mean, um, Balamari Sailor, you talked about bootstrapping the business, being able to self-invest in yourself, um, doing all that, that groundwork, uh, and you know, persuading people that to believe and trust in what I do. Uh, I want to go through all that stuff, especially with the first business, you know, the challenges that you faced. One was the people, the naysayers, so I think some of the big challenges was that uh, people, and I think the second time, because I get sick of people saying, oh, you fluked it, you fluked it. Mm, yes. And I, and I thought, well, how about we do do it again? Yes. To say to people, no, it's not a fluke. Uh, but I think that it brought a lot of people that were starting to come on board with us. Yes. I didn't care what colour they were. I always said money doesn't care what colour comes through the door. True. Uh, it's a business at the end of the day. Uh, so lots of different learnings around business. Lots of different learnings about me. Yes. What, my thinking, my attitude, everything, which goes a long way towards anything in life. Yes. Uh, then from there was about, you know, role modelling to other young people, to family. What does this look like, you know? And from there, it's about, okay, what is next? That chapter, okay, we build on we used to actually used to have a whiteboard in the back room of the, <laughs> of the coffee shop. So we used yeah. to close the shop and, and put 
pulled it out. Yeah. My sister's laughing, she's probably laughing hearing this. <laughs> that's where <coughs> Black Business Consultancy was um, mm. um, um, born at that point. So we didn't have people come in and, and do things, but I think that self-driven and, and still keeping those burning ambers alive to think, okay, what's next, what's next, what, what's next? Now, back then I didn't know what, if, I didn't even know what a focaccia was. Yeah, uh, yes. But I knew what good coffee was. So we learned, uh, you know, research and development ourselves. I don't know how many coffees we tried on the little machine, then we got the big machine, and we figured, oh, this is easy, I press yes. a button. So how, we didn't have a lot of money to start business, and when people say, oh, I don't have the money, well, you're killing your own dream. But that, that's the myth, right? Like, you know, um, you, you don't really need money to start a business. I mean, it, it will come if you're able to attract it uh, and start out small. Most people think business is, uh, you automatically have this persona, you have to have a lot of money or you're rich when you're in business. But it's not, it's a lot of work. It that, is a lot of work. That is true. Uh, there's a lot of proof of current businesses at the yes. moment that none of it has been from buying money. Yes. Uh, but I think from there, then, then from there, then we sort of ventured our own way. But we always, I suppose, always had that thinking: what's next? What's next? But a lot of, a lot of criticism, yes. a lot of disbelief. I think still pay, people are still waiting the day for, waiting for me to fail. Yes, uh, and that's fine. Look, people have their opinions, and and still today, people come and says, "What do you, what do you do?" Because we don't know. And I said, "Sometimes I don't know." <laughs> I do, I do whatever it takes. Yes. Um, yeah. I do whatever the boss asks me. Um, I do do whatever. But um, I think that taking that and in each step, moving forward in life and what that looks like, I still go back and learn those same principles. Yeah. Uh, and you know, sometimes a lot of criticism comes from your own mob. The, the biggest, you know, the biggest ones. The, is, Especially if you're there for your people, they're the first ones that really attack you. They don't mean to, it's just, I don't know, um, I think it's, it's an inherited um, mindset where, you know, it's always, because if you go back culturally, we always were a supportive network in culture. Right. You know, each part of the people in the community may uh, had a purpose in that and you always support each other. Then somewhere along the line, um, from what I know back in when the you know, colonization, all that stuff happening, there was this divide and then all that stuff. Right. And when you people start putting you down, that's the thing that hurts the most. Most of my experiences of the biggest criticism came from my own people. And I couldn't understand why. I was like, I'm the one representing here. Like, you know, I'm, I'm doing it for our people yeah. and we're employing our own people. It's like, why, why, um, why do that? And from that now, where I was going with this, because it's all a part of this, this thing of criticism, you know, starting out yeah. living your dream uh, or implementing an idea, I hear younger generations now coming in, one, we have this thing of shame, like people are so shy, to, like shame to try things. And two, when our, our own mob talk to them or the first um, negative thing that they get, it, it automatically discourages them. What did you do to get through that? I changed who I hang, who I hung around. Mm. I started to learn to read. Uh, I didn't. I didn't read the paper. I read books. I, I read things. I, I, I learned to hang around people or just listen to people. Uh, I did a lot of visual building myself to go out and say, why can't I have a drive a car like that? Why can't yeah. I do this? Yeah. Why can't I go on a holiday? Why? What's stopping me? And it, it, the realization was me. That was it. Mm. Uh, wow. And part of that was still today. Yes. You know, I have an old saying, why do 5% succeed and 95% don't? Yes. You know, 5% are prepared to do what the 95% is not prepared to do. Yes. Where do I sit in that? Uh, if you read my diary back in my office, you'll see things in there. Mm. What is success? What makes a successful person? Not just around monetary terms, what business or whatever it is. Keep talking, I've got to write this down. So part of that is, and, and it's about, you know, you're the first one there, you're the last one to leave. Yes. You, you will lose friends. Yes. You know, it, it can be a, a lonely journey. It is. But along the way, you, you're going you're gonna to make new friends. Yes. You know, and I always believe that I never think that I'm better than no one else. You know, but sometimes you have to make that distance, you know. And the reality is that some people are not going to come on that journey. Mm. And you can't stay there. You have to keep going because there's to. other people relying on you. Uh, and 
there's a lot of great leaders out there. You know, some some great books and and uh, you know, I, I, I'm tell us like actually out of all the episode, every episode that I have um, done, that's the one key thing that the people that I've spoken about was reading. Like I'm not a reader. Like I, I listen to audio um, books and podcasts now. And I think the first time I really ever read a book was when I was 15, and it was called The Hound of Baskerville, Sherlock Holmes. And it was just because it was an exciting book. But after that, I never, I thought it was a cho- as a chore. But um, I talked to another brother who's um, the counselor of your magical, uh, Bala, um, uh, Robbie Tamai, and he said the same thing, because we were on the same age, that it was a book that changed their perspective in life. And that book for me, well, I, I won't say, I want to ask you, what, what were the books that you read that changed your life? One, I tell you, one of the first books I really read was um, Malcolm X. Wow. Okay. Yes. You know, uh, I think it was really. I don't know why. I just it was just open and read it and just keep reading it. Of, I think the attraction was what he was and what yes. he became. Yes. Um, People don't understand that story. That side of the story. I just thought, this guy was in the street. Like that's right. He 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 went from there to here, and I thought, that's that's amazing. Uh, but there's other books, you know, like um, you know, um, um, Mr. Simons, you know, Aussie Home Loans, and yes. I like reading books around, uh, you know, biography, you know, like, I, I suppose not just around business, but just around or reading stories. I like those magazines at the airport, you know, about yes, people's um, journey in life. Just yeah, I was reading about some bloke in South Australia, you know, yes. where, where he's come from to what he did. So now he owns this and he's done achieved that, and I just thought. You know, he, just looking at him in the picture, and I'm thinking, you know, what? How does he think? Yeah. I, I, I you know, Mark Boris is probably one, one gentleman I, I like listening to. I often hear him talk in different things, and I, I do, you know, some searches on, on Google and listen to some of his talks. But you know, some of that sits in the in the the, the mind shift around, what does your day look like? Your yes. day looks like as soon as you get up. You know, what does that look like before yeah. you even think about business or what that day is going to look like? How are you? What is your thinking from that day? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and how you dress, how you think is how you're going to portray yourself when you go out into out the front door. What, you know, I'm always, you know, I, yes, I, I, you know, people say, oh, you know, you, you dress well and all these sorts of things. But it's for me, it's about being in that, in that space. This is... You have yes. to be in that time, in that mental space, because there's people going to be throwing rocks at you. Yeah, they're going to be trying to drill your dream out of your head that day. Yes, people are going to challenge you, but there's a lot of people along the way that wants to be part of your journey. Uh, and it, it's funny all these years later, but I, I did start writing a book, but I put it on the back shelf. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is there a book coming? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I should uh, share the, the title of it. Um, yeah, well, you, but this is the, you can say whatever you want, yeah. or don't say it if you don't. Because um, here's what's going. Gonna, what I want to ask you is, when you do publish that book, we have to get an exclusive here, part yes. of us. Uh, so procrastinating. So one of the things I have put things on the back burner. Yeah. And I thought, and that's what I do at home. So I just sit in and write and think, okay, what do I need to finish? Uh, and what you know, I'm happy to say my book title is "There Is No Tomorrow." Yeah. Because people say, "I'll do it tomorrow." Tomorrow, yeah. Language is everything. What you, what you, and I'm very mindful of that. What language am I saying? Am I, am I using that oh, same right. language that you know that? Yes. Because what I'm saying when I go to sleep, I always say, you know, what puts dreams keep you awake. Dreams don't put you to sleep. Mm. Dreams keep you awake. What are those dreams? You, you, you don't want to go to sleep. You, you're ready to get up the next morning and say, "I need to do this, 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 and that." Yes. Okay. It may not lead somewhere. Um, and I, I, I think that a lot of people think that success is going to just fall out of the sky. No, there, there's a long way. There's lots of if, you, if you're prepared to stick it out. Yeah. And and stick it out because you. You know what? I always say you don't know what the next door is. Exactly. You really don't know who you're going to run into next at an airport, at a shop, down the street. I've, I've had inspiration just from people every day off the street. Yes. They don't know me from a tin of paint. But born away and from that, or maybe I bought them a coffee and sit down, or some young people sitting when I was in South Australia talking to some young people, shouting Macca's, they were supposed to go to a party. Yes. They said, oh, we'd rather sit here, uncle, for a couple of hours. We just talked about it. we talked about what their dreams are, what mm-hmm. they 
and they thanked me. I was just going downstairs to grab a feed from the hotel and, you know, those two hours inspired me like they will never believe. Mm. But I, I believe it inspired them. Yes. So I think that understanding what is the functions, what is, what is the mindset of, and you, you know, you hear successful people, they don't talk about business. Very true. They, they oh just, my God! They just talk about life. They exactly. Oh, they, this this is what I yeah. like. The most successful people that I ever met, uh, such as yourself, never talk about business. Never talk about money. Never talk about business. Never talk about the accolades that they have. Sure. They actually just talk about life. Sure. And this is why we started this podcast because we wanted to share this type of valuable information. Because the 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 best I believe for me at this point, the best success that I have in life is living life. Sure. So yeah. I still remember the, you know, the morning we caught off for breakfast on Saturday morning at uh, the lily pad or the one next door. Yep. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, I still, you know, remember that. Still got the notes from that. When yes. We sat down and yarn. I, you know, I, I was it ca- candy? Ca- candy. Candy is there. We went there. We sat there and, and we and you you spoke about what your vision was. You know, I I still have those little scribble notes. Wow. You know, I I don't. When people tell me things, I I keep it because that's really inspiring. That was the note that I put down here. I'm like journaling and diary. Yes. Um, I, I actually do have notes from that same yeah. meeting as well. And um, that was the first, my first introduction of you. Sure. And how important is that, important is that writing it down and journaling? Because you and I, we have a passion for whiteboards. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I think whiteboards need to endorse us or something. <laughs> I don't know, I can't, I can't carry a whiteboard with me <laughs> yeah. uh, wherever I go. But I, I, I think that the reflection of that, of, yeah. of that conversation what do we take away from that? So, yes. uh, so I used to run some little workshops at home, you know, yes. people come along and I think, they, they, they don't call them my guinea pigs around my podcast, but there was lots of learnings around that, thinking, you know, I'm always mindful of what I'm saying. Yes. If I'm not prepared to do it myself, don't talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, sharing what, I'm happy to share whatever I know because I can't take it to my grave, whatever I know, because I've learned from a lot of smart people, yes. but I've learned from everyday people. Uh, smart people is not about because they're scientists or you know they get fifty degrees or whatever it is. Yep. These are everyday people that that have passion, that that you know have good ethics, good yes. morals, good standards, uh, and want to help people. Uh, and I think that never go away from that. Yep. Uh, I am who I am. Uh, I think I was in a meeting recently in Townsville. So on what they've heard about me when we had dinner, they went away with a whole different attitude. That, yeah. You know, that's not what I heard about you. So uh, I'll catch up with um, people down there from that meeting where what I had and go back. But I was just in shorts and thongs and a shirt. But I said, never judge a book by its cover. I yes. never do that. Uh, and you and I have many conversations. I like, I like having those yarns. I like having yes. those if people's got a dream, share it. And he, yes. was, he was doing that night at the table, sharing. Uh, he was really amazed that I was prepared to listen. Yes. I, I was amazed that he was inspiring me. You know, because not every day someone comes up to you and say, you inspire me. Yes. You know, where it's, it's, because every day, it's, that book, when someone, you've had a rough day and someone's tried to steal your dream or knock it out of your head, you go back and read. Yep. Or you make a phone call to someone. Yes. You know, I've rung many people and they say, I just out of the blue. They have no idea why I'm ringing them. I'm ringing them to get a recharge. That's I, true. I get a recharge. So when we caught up that day, it's good. What it does, it triggers me to think, hey, get back on the saddle. You know, yeah. like start doing things. Yes. Uh, that's why every now and then you, people say, oh, you want to catch up coffee? Yeah. Yes. I, I do with my cousin brother. We catch up for coffee. We share lots of ideas and thoughts and ideas and everything else. Yeah. We'll sit there. We go from about four different coffee shops on a Saturday. <laughs> then we have a conversation there. We go there. But it's good. It's, it's, it's a safe place to, to share some of that thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's good. I, like I said, today, invite me along conversation thank you for coming like i really appreciate i know you you're very busy uh we've been talking about it for a while actually because we were talking about doing this before we even had a podcast and now we're here and you're sharing um you know your stories and some valuable information in there like from being able to challenge criticism to just believing in yourself and you know coming to this point we were talking about uh how you can inspire yourself and that's by just living life 
and learning and being inspired by people around you. Yeah. Uh, and right now, like I know you, you, we could talk about you're a very successful man. But here we were talking about life, and this is what it's about. The most successful people never talk about the successes or accolades. They always talk about the journey or life and where they want to go and living your dreams and speaking about your dreams. Um, <clears throat> while, because I know this is transitioning to the next, this last part of um, where the conversation that I wanted to go uh, about you. Well, to me, I not only see you as a uh, older brother. But I learn so much from you every time we have a conversation. Like you, I, I, I consider you a mentor without calling you a mentor. And I'm going to say that live now. Um, but there, there were points in time where sometimes when you wake up, um, you just don't want to go out there and face all this stuff in, in the world. Like I get it so many, even more so now, especially in the world of business, um, entrepreneurship, and even my world of creative arts. That sometimes I'm like, this, I just want to, I just want to give this up. You know, let it go. Have you ever experienced stuff like that? And what do you do to overcome that type of attitude? It's, uh, sometimes it's a lonely space. Yeah. It's a very lonely space. I always say in life, you know, that there's relationships, there's health, you know, there's career, whether it's business or whatever job or whatever it is, you know, there's three points in your life. And it's, it's trying to find that right balance. Yeah. Um, I have many fears in my discussions when I used to run those workshops. I used to talk about fears. What are those fears? Yes. I'm, not, I'm not the black Superman or mm. I have fears. And my biggest fears was that, I'll tell you one of my biggest fears was to find someone who shares my dreams yes. and have their own dreams. Uh, and I think that that was always one of my biggest fears. What if I, am I going to be lonely? Mm. It's no use being successful if you've got no one in your life. Yes. And I think that's, uh, I, I did travel, like travel overseas, do all sorts of things, but when you come back home and you, you, you're in that place, what does it look like? Yeah. Uh, one of my biggest turning points when I was on a turn 50, map out my next 10 years of my life, what does it look like? Um, you know, just over 12 months ago, I had a massive heart attack. I, wow. shouldn't, I shouldn't be here. Uh, wow. Stubborn, uh, stubborn headed, uh, scared of needles not going to the hospital that night and everything else mm -hmm. uh, probably kept kept me alive. So I think that it, it, it reminds you that, you know, where are you at in life? What are you doing? Um, big holes in my life was um, finding someone, finding love, finding relationship, finding, you know, you can have all the passion in your life, but it's good to share it with someone. Yes. Uh, and and big thing for me was that they have their own goals and their own dreams mm -hmm. and I want to help them achieve theirs. Yes. You know what I mean, that's that's what that hold and there's a journey with both of you. But at, you know, in the, at the moment, you know, there's lots of things on the bubble at the moment. There's lots yes. of lots of exciting things I, and I often share with you what yep. my next uh, couple of adventures are. Yes. Um, and Which we will um, have our own podcast to launch all these things. Podcast. So I'm saying it now that there's going to be a yeah. Chris Anderson and Mile Power podcast. It's going to come out. We're going to make it happen now. We're, I said it. Now we have to bring it into existence. Uh, I did say around the other venture, around the uh, you know the, the clone stuff. And, you know. Like yes. That. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, it's strange where you get an idea. Is is that real? Can you really do that? Yes. You know. So. I'm, I'm not ashamed to share with people to say, hey, I'm thinking about this idea. Um, and, and why why is that? Why don't you... Like... Mate, I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. I, I, I'm already in the mindset, I'm yes. going to do it anyway. Yes. If it doesn't launch or doesn't get off the ground, I don't care. I, I already got another 10 ideas. And That's yeah, it. But that goes back to where, um, you know, being able to know when not to speak and not to share with people because the first I remember uh, when I was working on my first album the show would go on I had this whole idea about where the journey would go That's for the right. next five years and I spoke too soon to a lot of people and they looked at me as I was crazy you know they told me about this this word and this is where I learned this word called pipe dreams and when I understood what pipe dreams was I'm like no you don't understand this has already happened I'm just catching up to the time right. like most people don't know that I, I have um, not, not only merchandises shoes you know, sure. things that go with, with everything. I'm going to put a photo of the shoes in this part here. But when you, you were talking about um, that, that idea of clone, I was like, my eyes did. I'm like, wow, I didn't even think about that. We could do this. That's right. Uh, well, why not? Why not? Exactly. Why not? What, is, what does the clone represent? I, I spoke to you around what my, yep. my concept around it's not just a clone. It, there's a larger picture behind it. What, it, it, what yes. is that? Yes. Uh, and what does it represent? Yes. Um, 
know Yves Saint Laurent or you know or Boss or come yep. up with a different name. My 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 <laughs> one that I use right now, we're gonna start our clone. Um, the one that I use now is called um, Million. Yes. I every morning when I put that on, I'm like, yeah. yes, it's a million dollars I'm putting in right now. My part, yeah. <laughs> I, I've got about I don't know about ten different ones. You're a collector, of course. I, 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 don't, I, I don't collect many things. It, yes. it, it's very strange. Watches, wallets, what? and clothes. Yes, that's it. Uh, but it, it's very strange. What does that look like? Yeah. And I, th- it yeah. was just by chance, I was sitting on the edge of my bed and I watched all my clients and partner was there. And I think looking and she goes, "Oh, you like this and that." And she, she's, I'm very fussy, but I wear it for certain days and what. Yes. I, and it, I tell you. I, I feel sharp when you walk out. Absolutely. You smell good, you, you feel good. What does that represent? So that's why I brought that little concept yeah. up with you. Yeah. And I said, well, maybe onto something here. Don't know yet. Don't know, but flesh it out and yes. kick it around and see if it's got legs. Maybe not this year. Um, but, you know, then it, I, I don't go, I never say, oh, I've got no money to get that off the ground. Yep. No. Don't even, that, don't even worry about that. I'll find a way. Absolutely. Find a way to get that off the ground. I, I got this concept I call the zero zone. I start off, I'm, I'm like, what can I create right now? What value can I bring without any money? And I start off with zero and see how I can build equity. By equity, I mean not only money, but brand, the work um, value that I can bring into it, partners, all that stuff. And That's right. Everybody, and this is the mindset that I think um, for me, being in the crayfishing in the industry at a very young age, uh, it uh, it, it, def- it got rid of that mindset out of my head. The mindset I see kill most dreams is when people get a good idea, which I could think is solid, or an idea, they jump straight to the money. I need funding for this, or I got no money, I can't create it. And therefore, the dreams die with that mindset. I come from a place where I knew that we don't have money, but I can borrow a dinghy, I can go ask family for fuel, I can borrow the gear and go out and create money, then pay for it later. Sure. And that is actually how we started the music. I, I was crayfishing at the time and we took the heads that people were throwing away from the crayfish, cut off the knuckles, and went to my brother Monday, Damien's house there, cooked the knuckles and created food. I started selling food um, to create money to invest into our music. And that's creating something out of nothing. I think one, of the, 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 one, one thing I learned is that the biggest investment is time. Yes where you spend your time, because your time is worth money. Absolutely. Um, and I think that, and I, and I say that to a lot of my nationals, where you spend your time. Mm. What's more important, the yep. party coming up next weekend or the next five years of your life or the next 12 months? Exactly. And I said, well, you know, you really give it some thought. Um, but part of that is is learning, you know, how do you get something off the ground? Mm. Build partnerships. Don't be afraid to share your dream. Yes. You only need one partner two partners it, it's like a snowball effect yeah then from there you scale build model shape design and let it grow some legs it'll turn into a centipede after a while <laughs> yes. you know um, <laughs> I like that then from there then it, it'll gather momentum and I think part of that is what I learned is that don't go alone take people with you yes some people are gonna say yes some people are gonna say no that's fine you, you might have to find 200 people for one yes is it worth it? Of course it is. Absolutely. Why, why would you give up your dream after two people or five people? I mean, that's, that's when you think about business people, that's what they do. Exactly. Um, when you think about people wanting to do something, if you're passionate about it, you'll do whatever it takes. Yes. Whether you've got money or not. That passion may not be, uh, it may not even be business. Mm-hmm. It may be just doing something personally in your life. Um, I've, I've taken on a new, uh, a new, uh, New training regime. So, I was going to get into that. I know you want to ask about that. So, <laughs> you know, part of that was what do I do in my spare time? How do I take focus around and, and, and away from what I do every day and go and do stuff? So, I've taken on uh, it's a new thing called uh, uh, Jodo. 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 Now, I looked it up and think, what, what yes. the hell is Jodo? Uh, but I've taken that on board and I'm actually really enjoying it. So, yes. training every week. Uh, it's, it's a form of uh, it's a martial art, yes. art Japanese, so um, it's it's really good. Uh, great sensei, great um, group of people there. Yes, uh, and they're, they're not judging me. I, yes, I was I felt a bit not shame, but a bit nervous. The new fir- kid in the new kid in there. Yes, but you know what? Last night I went there and there was another new person. I think well, 
you know what, and was, we, we're helping each other to get through uh, what, we sh what we're learning. So yes, uh, I think that's, uh, it, it's not about, it's, it's not about trying to, you know, learn martial arts or stuff like that, but it's about doing something different. Do I, something. Think, I think that's, don't be afraid to do. Once again, give it a be, go. Give it a go. Don't I mean, be, there don't was. Dare to dream. Yeah, you, you, you met my sensei. My sensei is um, uh, um, Hassan Bintal, yes. and I started karate up in um, the Torres Straits, and he comes from the lineage of Matsumoto. Yes. And, um, and that was by accident. I was purely walking through a school where he was teaching these kids and walking to the gym, and he, he knew who I was, and he said, come, boy, join. Yes. And I sat there for two, two sessions, and by the third one, I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. And what I found for me, because I do a couple of, I do um, karate, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, um, Wing Chun. Uh, I'm going to try this um, Jodo now. Um, but the one thing that I really, really loved about um, martial arts was not the actual training of these techniques, but the philosophies and how it applies in life. And I learned so much about life from karate and from has, um, you know, Sensei Bintal. Uh, and I just wanted to ask you about that with your experiences in our Jodo. Look, it's it, it's a it's a way to to forget about everything. Yes. Uh, it it it. As many people know me, I'm quite impatient, particularly on the road. Uh, but what it does, it pulls you back and say, "Hey, it's okay." Yes. Don't you know? It's it's about finding the right temperament. Yes. Uh, sometimes things don't go right. Yes. Don't lose your temper. Don't don't lose that. But I, I think it's it's a whole different world for me. Yes. I think that meeting new different people outside. My comfort zone. Yep. Going to meet. You know, the strange thing is that I'm the only black fellow there. I think I'm the only, because everyone speaks uh, Japanese there, mm -hmm. I'm the only person who speaks English. So that doesn't stop me. Yes. So uh, they, I'm welcome into that group. And I think that I'm not afraid to do that. It's, that's good. So I, I think that taking that learning to what is the next business venture? What is, what is, what is the next journey in life? Yes. What is, you know, what's around the corner, I don't know. Uh, but I think that every day, what drives you to wake up in the morning? What drives mm -hmm. you to get out of, out of bed? What is your thinking? And I, and I always think that, and I always like sitting down in the morning, thinking about, okay, what's the thing I need to do today? Yes. I, I, I self-reflect. I, I, I sometimes go by myself and go sit somewhere. I have little places where I'll go and think. I have a little book, I go and have coffee. Even when I travel overseas, I carry a little book. I come back with lots of ideas. And I sit there and have a, uh, don't drink no more, so lots of that stuff. Is yes. Good. But over there, I go and have a coffee. Sit down and think about where am I at? Where am I at in life? Yes. Uh, more importantly, how does it affect people around me? Wow, yeah. What, what do they see in me? Uh, what are they, what do they really, I mean, people judge me anyway. I can't stop that. that I, I, don't, I don't worry about that. There's a great um, lesson I learned in that was, um, there was a big part when I started in, uh, in music, I was thinking, how do I try to make people like me? But then it took me maybe 15 years through that journey where I, then I, I realized that, and I understood that I can't control what people think, but I can control what I do and think right. and how I feel. And that's all I, that's all I can do. Who's going to buy your records? Who's going to do that? Yes. So people I used to get a lot of, how oh, you do that motivational rubbish. Yeah. Good. You call it whatever you want. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, but that's that is true out there. That's that's the fact of life. What mm -hmm. what is people are going to? They're good challenges. Yes. I thank people for that. Yes. Because it drives you. Yes. It, it it pushes you forward. But you know, people said, oh, you know, I think in the end, I think some of those people are the ones that will buy that book or buy that record because yeah. they'll be curious. Curious will get them to think. I wonder what it really sounds like. Yes. I buy it anyway. And you know what? You hope to think that. They might think they might think differently. Exactly. And as we all do, you think you know. Sometimes if you just stop and think, you think, hey, maybe he's not. Maybe what he said was there's a bit of truth to it. Very true. And they do an inch at a time. Speaking of the book that you read, um, Malcolm X, like great, great leader, great um, person of his time, he had uh, a quote that um, I, um, I, I, I'm going to paraphrase it, but he goes something like this. Don't be so quick to judge people because you were once there. Yeah. And that's what, um, and I talked to Dane about this uh, as well, that when I write or create whatever I do, I don't 
try to convince people, I know I'm doing what I do. There were people on their life journey as well. There will be a point where they might come to that song uh, and it will resonate with them. But you can't convince people to, I mean, you can inspire people, uh, influence people, um, but that's short lived. It is. I, I, quotes is something I, I, I really enjoy, even in songs, music. Yes. There's a couple of songs. Uh, uh, it's a Billy Joel song. I won't tell you the song, but uh, in these. He's saying what he sings is that it can only be seen in the eyes of the blind. Wow! Yeah. Now, like when I when I think about that, and I think if you close your eyes, you can see it. Yes. It's, it's it's when you look at an empty shop, you don't see an empty shop. No. You you see people sitting there. You see that's happening over there. That, and I think, um, you know, Mark Twain has a lot of quotes. He has. Yes, I was gonna. Yeah, yeah, he has quite. He has so many. One of his is that you know the two most important days of your life is. The day he was born. And then the day you discover why. That's right. Yeah. When you think and figure that out, then life will begin. Yes. I actually have a song that's unreleased said, so it's coming out a new album that is based around that quote. That's and right. I started uh, start the actual song off with that quote. That's right. The two most important days of your life is the day we were born yep. and the day you discover why. And that's I right. think that's a powerful, um, that is a very powerful, I'm um, saying, because yep. s sometimes, like, living life, like, you, you don't just born and know what you're there for. That's sure. just something that you have to live and then you find out and discover. Sure. But yeah. unless you're prepared to take that journey, you'll never figure out why. You'll never. You'll never know. Yeah. You'll never know. And I think that's, you know, that's, what's, what's the, is that a way to live or is that, you know, what's stopping you? Yes. What is stopping you? What, someone's comment? I mean, really? Exactly right. You know, like, I just think, well, what's the worst that could happen? I tell people, what's the worst that could happen? Someone yeah. will go out there and say, oh, you're a fool, you'll never succeed. I got told in school, you'll never succeed, you'll be dumb. You'll be... Teachers told me that. Yeah, wow. I, I, I'd love to see those teachers today, because <laughs> I don't know what I'd do. Like. But um, that moves on. Yes. That, that thinking, you just think, that's in the past. Yes. But I, I, I think is what people say to you today. Um, little things that people say something uh, I, I carry a lot around and when people give me a little little gift or something I hold it for years I hold it forever because that little thing is that sort of represents that they believe in you yes that's all I need for the next day for the next day so when you ask what drives you if you come to my place there's little things and you think well, what's that rock there why yes. would you keep a rock on that that rock is very powerful which I where I'll keep on my bench mm. That rock has a lot of meaning. That rock came from a, 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 a young person who seen something in me. That rock means everything to me. Or well, that little thing over there, no. And I think, well, do they really know? It's like, you know, mail power. Do they really know what's behind me? Yes. Do they know people like me? Do they know other brother in the room? Yes. Do they really know the, the inside of that person or what's behind them? And I always look at the rock and think, that's me. Yes. In that rock. There's an old saying is that, you know, the, the gentleman that chipped away at this old rock and rock and chipped away and chipped away and turned it in, formed it into a diamond. People said, oh, look what you created. He said, no, it was always there. Mm -hmm. You just didn't see it. Yes. And diamonds are made from pressure. Absolutely. You know, like there's, there's lots of things, little analogies and all that I, you know, I use and I think they're, they're things that... I love that say because I remember it, it came from um, I don't know if it was Killer Mike Ludacris, uh, two rappers that I actually I, I really respect, uh, and it was around the time when Atlanta was really getting into. Um, so I'm going to geek out on music right now. Atlanta was on the scene when um, Outkast uh, won one of the awards in the Source. Um, but I go to the quote and he said this saying that I've never forgotten. Uh, pressure is something um, that you can either take or be crumbled by. Pressure either breaks pipes. Or create diamonds, yes. and that's most people. Don't, like you said, those precious gems are created from dirt and created from all the elements you're fusing into this pressure, and then it, 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 it ha it's up to that those components in that time to create that gem. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm I'm not a scientist of everything, but you know, I, I'm I'm still snowballing, gathering, yep. learning, sharing. There's things I haven't even thought of yet that I'm, I, I plan to achieve. Yes. Uh, 
but uh, you know the biggest important thing is that I, I suppose I, I keep my feet grounded. I, I, I'm very humble from from where I come from to where I am. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. Uh, and most of my friends who know me really well, yep. uh, who know me really really well, uh, who will 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 say that. I think yes. that you know how do you how do you keep going? But uh, you know I have a lot of mentors out there, and people. Don't even realise they're mentors to me. Exactly. You know, and that's they, what they, we were talking about they, in the beginning. They, and, I, and, I, yeah. and like I say, often I'll just ring them up and say, oh, I want to catch for coffee. Yes. It's not a coffee. I, I, I need a fix. Yes. It's, it's like I'm a junkie to, <laughs> to, to, to injection of self-belief. Yes. And, and it goes back to what you're saying, the people that you surround yourself with, right? right. Um, the first part of I know when growing up before I came into everything that I was doing um, I realized that the people that I were around I love them dearly it was just the world they're creating and there's this I, I know you knew show of the the saying uh, show me the five people that you hang around the most in life and I will show you your life yes. uh, and that's when we started to uh, when I started to decide that I, I need to and you mentioned it I need to be able to be around people who uh, either have done what I've done or sure. on the same journey you know, I'll go catch up with family. I'll sit around, have yarn. Yeah. You know, have parties. You know, still, still go down there. But now I'm walking with a laptop, not a box. I said that's the only difference now. Yes, that, and they you like know. that one. But they laugh. With a laptop you know, they the laugh. But, you know, <laughs> nephews there laugh and say, "Ah, you're, you're mad." Um, but when you start yarning, yes. You know, I, I, I tell you one thing. Years ago, and I was watching a nephew. He was, he was watching me, and this is sort of really hit home for me. Because I used to go visit my brother's house, my older brother and all his, all his kids, you know, his, his youngest boy, because I was the youngest in my family, he's the youngest of them. Yes. And he, he was about 14 or so, and I used to go there visit up there at the farm and that, and yarn and talk. And one day I went in his room looking for him, and I seen there he had ten of this and that, and he had all his shirts folded in the drawer and all. I was looking at myself. Wow. You know, and it gave me goosebumps when I was standing there, I think, he used the same deodorant, he got the same toiletry back, he folds his clothes, even when he puts it on the line, everything. Yes. He was watching, and he was- Everything he's a, he's that you were doing. He was watching everything I do. I, I had goosebumps, but I laughed to myself. And I think at that point, that's when I said, you never know who's watching you. Very true. Still today, he, he's going to Western Australia. Before he left, we had a chat. We had a chat. He goes, Uncle, what are I doing? What wow. are we doing? You know, and I, I map out your next five years when you go over there but there's already been some detours in the road yes rings me get back on the road keep going I told you these stumbling blocks are going to be there yes don't lose your vision around what you're going there for I said I'll always be here I'm not going nowhere ring any time we got we got mobile phones now when you're feeling down or you've you know you're feeling that it's not working ring I said, I ring people. I yes. don't even know why I'm ringing. But I've had a shit day. I've, I've had things happen to me. Someone tried to bash the dream out of my head. Yeah. I've, things haven't worked to what it is. But I will ring someone and just say good day. It may be a family. It might be an old friend. Mm -hmm. I just have a yarn. But for me, relaxing is going back, you know, I go visit family. We sit around and talk stupid, you know, black fellas. Sit around there, talk, laugh, all that. That's good for me. Yes. Um, then I'll go back because, you know, when then then I might share because I've got a lot of brothers and you know that that work and some of my own business and I, and they're really interested. And we sit around a fire and yarn. They they're really interested. Say, what do you think of this? And I'm, I'm really interested in what they're doing. Yes. Um, and you know, and some of them say it's good that we because it's good to sit around. Sometimes we can't have these conversations because there's not enough of us. And so well, our job is to create that network. Yes. So more of us yarn about this stuff. Yes. Not be afraid to talk about what we do. And, and I know, certainly one brother I know, he cops a lot of criticism. But you know what? He, I said to him, you really inspire me. And he was a bit shocked to think, you inspire me. I said, no, you, Russ, you inspire me, man. You work hard. You work six, seven days a week. You provide for your family. You're achieving, you're, you're doing things. And it's funny how he remembered me years and years and years ago mm. when he first came to visit me. Now, I had some documents on my t kitchen table. 
and he, he still today, even though whether sometimes he charge up or save <laughs> he says, I remember you used to drive everywhere. You used to have that, that car and you drive everywhere and you'd be out there doing things. He says, I remember when I first come there and I seen that and he goes, I still don't forget that. Mm. And, it, it, and I said to him, you know, I go, my goodness, Russ, that's, that's, even way back then you was watching me. Um, but so now I'm watching you. That's inspiring, that's, yeah. I think that's, when you asked again, what drives you, what yep. gets you out of bed, those things. Yes. Um, and I think that that's really keeps you grounded. That really keeps you why you do what you do. Yes. Uh, that, that question there, that word why, um, I never knew the power of that until a few years ago. I mean, I used to ask questions like, how do I do this? What do I do to be able to do that? Um, but I'll tell you why this is so powerful. Because um, I used to say it with a negative tone. Why am I here? Why is this happening? Sure. Why? Then flipping that and saying, okay, why am I doing this? And looking at it as a positive light. Or why not me? Sure. You know, th that question is such a powerful question. That, just that word, yes, why? You know, then why, then what? What if I don't do it? Exactly. What's the worst that could happen? Yes. You know, am I going to die wondering what if? I don't that, want to be there. No, no. You know, like, what's the worst that could happen? Okay, uh, this could happen. Okay, is it in the world? No, it's no. not. You know, like, yeah. there's, this, there's another day. Um, but some of the things is that, yeah, look, life is interesting. Life is, like I said, the turning point, 50 for me. What does the next 10 years look like? The scary part is that I put 10 years, but I, I'm, the way I'm, I'm progressing, I, I reckon it won't take 10 years. Yeah, you know, but, but, but that's the thing, most people that's, really... That's, that's still good for me. Yeah, this is inspiring because um, at a young age, I remember that I, the people that were older than me look forward to see the ages of 50, 60 as their point of retirement. You're at the point where this is where their mindset is at. We're supposed to be retiring now, but you, you're already thinking about where's the next 10, 20 years. Um, and that, I believe, is what um, uh, successful people, people in life look forward to. I mean, we look forward to the next five, 10 years. And even though we've called age as a number, um, it is really not a number. It's about how you live life. And you can live uh, multiple lifetimes in a single lifetime. That's right. You can achieve a lot in one day. Yes. It's what you, yeah. It's, it's where your thinking is at. You, yes. I said, you could strip me of everything, throw me in the gutter and have nothing, but it's what's between my ears. And, and that, that's what you can't, no one can steal that. And, and just to clarify, that's when it. we talk about what's between the ears, we talk about the mind. That's it. And um, Dr. Martin Luther King, his famous saying it was, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. That's right. Yeah. Man, so much quotes, so much gems. This is probably the longest podcast, but while I got you, I'm going to continue. Yeah, get um, while you can. Yes, that's because I know you're a hard man to get. Oh, yeah. I'm always around. It, it took me 23, 22 episodes before I got him on here. So. Hey, yeah, it's funny because people say, you know, where you been? Or they ring up and say, are you okay? Or we haven't seen you. Around. I said, look. Yeah, you all around. over the place. You traveling here, like you yeah. actually. We're gonna say this for when we start our podcast, yeah. but we're gonna talk about your adventures traveling the world. But we'll keep that up for another one, because this where where I want to transition right now is man. There's so much gems and you know life experience there to go into the world where you're working now. So you're part of the the iTech group, uh, but you're also part of this organization that I really want to talk about. Is Great Motive, and um, I really want to go into that and uh, speak about. Um, it's like the purpose and the things that you do because iTech group, you know, they um, in the world of um, NDIS, which is um, you know disability and you know youth and people at risk, and that's one of your passions and you know speaking about your life journey and this is the things that you give back. Uh, can you talk about your, your world now, especially in that place? So and my, yeah, yep. certainly. So my world at the moment. So the iTech group is made up of a whole range of different companies. Yeah, uh, that's in disabilities, youth. We're in housing. We're in a whole range of different spaces. And my job is I, I've been there probably 13 years, um, walked in one day on Sheridan Street and, and, and really, uh, you know, credit to uh, people in that company who yes. obviously may have seen a little diamond in me or some sort, uh, but to be part of helping build that company to where it is today as well. And lots of different learnings. Uh, some really good mentors within that organisation yes. as well. I won't, I won't mention names, but some really sharp, yeah good minds yes from there again I go back to the, the 
some of the comments before was around when you see an opportunity or it's handed to you, what are you going to do with it? Yes. And part of that was looking at great motive. So it's a non-for-profit, we're a charity, an indigenous organisation. I've, I've chaired that from the start. Yes. So what does that look like? You know, what is that taking something from nothing and build it into something? Now, yes. We're in, we're in all different fields. We're delivering uh, uh, youth programs. We're looking at housing. We're looking, we're looking at a whole range of things. That it, it sort of lay dormant for about 18 months or so, two years. Then all of a sudden, we injected like steroids into it. Then within <laughs> yes. six months, yes, um, we've flourished. So we could easily said, oh, scrap it, get rid of it. Why? No, leave it sit there. Leave it sit there. Mm -hmm. When it's time to grow. It will grow. Then it we, will. We just add some more water and yes, into it. Then from there, strategy. It's all about strategy. What does the board look like? But we never lose that dream. That dream was just parked there, and and then we had new people on the board. Board yep. changes. Things change. Time change. Yes. Then we built that. Then we, we then there's other indigenous companies that we looked at. Um, so first strain technology. Yes. Then you know we got an indigenous empowerment network. Then you know, there's indigenous food solutions and doesn't mean they're all off and running, but there was a purpose to what that looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, so sitting as shareholder and sitting as chair, a chairperson on that, sitting within companies, I might work on the company, but there's other shareholdings I sit in. Yes. So the purpose around understanding business as a whole, how do you take something and build it into a, you know, someone said to me, oh, you're building a um, empire. Mm. I said, well, empire is empire is that you've got to bring people along that journey. What does that look like? Yes. But I think that understanding all that, understanding around what is modelling, what is scaling, what is, you know, what is partnerships, what is a partnership, mm -hmm. uh, how to listen to people and everything like that. But I think that that sort of really, it's really not just improved a lot of those learnings in business you take in life yes because I think that's important uh, there's a lot more interesting things like you and I now the interesting thing for me at the moment is which hat do I wear <laughs> yes <laughs> so I think that then that you develop a skill a bit of an art form to say when I go into a meeting mm -hmm. which I can wear all the hats if I want yes so go into a conversation with government or whatever it may be and I think I've got a solution for you but I can wear three different hats in this one conversation. Yes. So, you know, part of that learning is about how to present, how to, how to, how to future solve before you even get to the meeting. Yes. What? So, even there's a couple of people who want to go to a meeting. I, I say, let's prepare. And I say, how do you prepare for that meeting? I said, I already go in with an answer that they don't ever really know. Yes. I said, how do you think about that? I said, well, that's all part of your development. Yep. Um, so part of interesting say, I don't, I don't say at the meeting, I don't say, oh, I already thought about that. I just say, oh, that's a good idea. I might have a solution that I'd already thought before we yeah. left the building. So I think that's all part of learning, understanding, not just what business principles are, but how do you think, how, what's the mindset going in? Uh, but part of that, what I really enjoy is that I'm taking a few other people to the meeting or I'm teaching a brother at work and say, hey, this is what we do. Uh, we had a young gentleman who used to work for us, and you know who I'm talking about. Yep. He he was um, he learnt a lot. Uh, he still texts me today, even though he's moved on. He's off doing his own little ventures yes, now. Yes. Yes. Uh, as you're aware, I collect watches. So one of the parting gifts I gave to him was that he li he liked one of my gold uh, blue watches. Yes. It was a nice watch, five hundred dollars worth. But I gave him as a parting gift. Uh, he spoke very highly of people. He he. he considered you as a certainly high regards and as one of his mentors um, and he always asks you know how you know how's Pat yeah. going and everyone else I, s I said to him in parting you know this is you're out there in the real world now but don't forget there's always people here you can always come back and yarn to yes so don't be afraid to ring Pat and say catch her for yarn for coffee you know 
when things are not going to work out because they're not. Yes. Um, so he's off uh, in an entrepreneurial sense. Yes. Chasing some. We, chasing we, we had um, I think his younger brother on here. It was one of the episodes talking about some of this stuff. So I'm yes. going to let people figure it out. Yes. You have to now go search through all the um, the uh, episodes to, to understand who we're talking about. But, but I yes. think the, the, the magic part is that when you see the spark in the eye and you think, oh, I've learned something new today. Yes. That I didn't know. That's good. But I might have learned that in an hour ago of someone else. Yes. I'm just passing it on. That's it. That's what we're here you for. Uh, mm. So the interesting part was then when the, the Friday night meetings I have at home, they, people must have thought I was selling am, <laughs> Amway or soap or not. <laughs> Christ knows what. When they sell these cars at my house, and they think, this fellow lives alone there, but yet all these cars All these cars are there. Said, What's this fellow selling me? Um, but part of that, the, the, the journey was that what I learned all that week and part of what I was learning in business and work and life and journey, I would share those on the Friday, Friday evening. Yes. Then, but we build that into our lesson. Yeah. Then it made more reality sense to say that learning is actually, I, I'm not making that up because that's what I did this week. Yes. Uh, and I think people really appreciate it and say, it's not game and stuff. There's, there's, I'm, not, I'm not standing here making the stuff up. Yeah, or speaking or regurgitating something that you heard from somewhere else. You actually lived it and you're doing it. I actually it. practiced. Yes, you practiced. This week, these are my new learnings in, in what life or business or whatever it is I'm sharing with you tonight. Yes. We'll put that in the context around what your goal is or your dream and everything else. So I really enjoyed that. As tired as I was. <laughs> yeah. As tired as I was. Um, it was a good way to end the week. That's um, the, which yeah. led me then to think, I need to get this out faster, quicker, uh, into the people on this podcast. That's what we're going to do our podcast. <laughs> um, I, I, mean, it's, I just want to go back, before we close it off, to the, what that thing that you talked about, um, people's perception of building an empire. You know, uh, and uh, they think that it's, it's just one person up there doing all these things. But... I used to think of that as a negative um, term, but when I look at everything that we create, so we're, we're solutions focused, right? We see a problem and how we can add value into a community. That's why you start all these multiple things and do it because this is the vehicle that we can take and change lives, change our lives, but also impact uh, and bring a lot of value. And that's what I want to, I want to, what's the best word, debunk this mindset of what uh, empire is and understand that if we have multiple vehicles it's not because it's something that we want to gain from it's, it's because our mindsets are we see a problem we see we can bring value how is the best way that we can bring it into community I, I think the, R- Richard Branson's books is a good book to read yep. if you want to read some of this stuff, I, haven't, I, I haven't read it yet you, but you read his book he's, he's, his mindset and how he how he looked at things People might think that looked a bit odd, but no. yeah, I think my goal is that um, is that I want I'm working backwards. Yes, I want to just I want to go more into the shadows. I want other people to shine. So my goal is my ultimate goal is I, t- I tell you you know and it, there's no hidden secret is that um, is that I want to live overseas three months of the year. Yes, and operate work from over there. What does that look like? Why can't I? Yes. Um, it takes, uh, uh, I suppose, indigenous thinking and business to a whole new level. Why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, exactly why not? that question. Why not? Why? Again, why not? Set the company up, go away. Set the companies up, go away. Yes. One files, that's fine. We've got another 50 over here. Yes. Richard Branson's book. Really interesting. But apart, apart from that, it's good to see other people shine. Yes. You know, because in those workshops, I, I can tell you lots of things, is that it, it's strange. I've got a good, a really good mate of mine. He was going home after those workshops and he was coming to me and said, even his partner was saying, you've changed. He's actually given up the alcohol for six months. Mm. Uh, he's changed and, and she was, he was going back and, teach, and talking about what we were talking about. She was taking that summer to her job. You know, I didn't know how then to his kids. You know, like from our little humble Friday night session was going through his family. Uh, so I think that that's good. I'm planting some seeds. Yes. Then my ultimate goal is, is I, I love to travel. But my, my goal is just maybe write books, go and travel the world and be a keynote speaker, pay, you know. Yes. I'm happy to, if 
I've got enough junk out there that I'll yeah. do it for free. Um, yes. But I think that money's not everything. It's, it's certainly not everything. No. But I think my goal is to be, I'm working towards to be in a position to do, to do more what I love. That's, that's really it. If you put it in a nutshell, that is it. I need to build this over here so I can go do more of this free. Time. Yes. I always go back to time. Time. I'm I'm buying back time in my life and I'll go and I'll go and talk to anyone, even Ronald McDonald out there. I'll go and talk to anyone. Yes. But I still need to build all this over here. But the, ultimately that is my goal. Um, that's my own little thinking that I, I have. No, that's yeah. that's a way thank you for sharing that. Like um I know that's gonna inspire a lot of people to like even sitting here this this um, last you know hour and a half, uh, thinking about um, some of the not some all the gems you just dropped. There's a lot of a lot of gems that you just dropped here that a lot of people will take away, and I know they'll be inspired by listening to this. Um, interesting thing when they talk about um, working backwards. I have this concept. I, I know it's been out there, but I, I've um, used it for myself. I call it future memories. Uh, and I always say to people, this has already happened. In my mind, it's already happened. Uh, I'm just waiting for the time till my physical sure. being can catch up to it. And that's a different way of thinking. And um, hearing what you just explained with everything that you do, you see it 10 years in, in advance. And you might achieve it before 10 years. Like, you might achieve it in 18 months. You know? Um, but it's having that, that, that thought process. Yes. You might surprise yourself. Mm. Um, then I think that, you, that it really resonates once once you've achieved that first goal and you think that wasn't so hard yes that wasn't as so bad after all yeah and I did that in three months and I thought imagine if you did six months. imagine if you did this for two years yeah um, you know think what would what would life look like not, not just because you want to drive a deadly car or whatever no what would life look like mm. buying back time what would that look like it's not buying back time so I can go play golf buy back time so I can go and go and do things yes whether it's in life or go and do things I enjoy we're all teachers everyone's a teacher yes uh, how do you know maybe you go and do to help run a program volunteer my time to deliver something or sit there yarn talk share whatever it is uh, maybe someone's got a business and they're struggling I've got time not to worry about playing golf or drive around in a Hummer or whatever I would use that time to go, you know what, I'll go in there and help them run. I'll go and take all my skills in there, Yes. free. They'll have my undivided attention for the next month. And I'll show them everything I know and bring resources, tools. I'll bring other people in there I know. Yes. To build that, build them up and say, hey, and where's the next one? Could be anything. I don't know. That's that's where I think my time would be, what I, I, I would get a lot more out of. But, uh, Wow, we, we, we definitely, like, like I said, um, this is the, the introduction to the podcast that you will see, yeah. our podcast. Um, Mr. Anderson, I, I like this. Every time I come in there, I will say, um, uh, Mr. Anderson, and it was always like a matrix. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about Neil, <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Uh, but but Chris and, uh, Chris, Mr. Chris Anderson and Mao Power podcast, we're going to be coming soon. Um, no, we can go for hours and hours, uh, but I, I, I realize that I value your time, so thank you very much. Um, for coming in and taking time out of your, your busy schedule to share th these, this knowledge with us. Um, I, I'll ask the last question um, okay. to you, and this I ask everybody who sits here on Powerverse. Um, I know you already dropped a lot um, already, a lot of gems, but if you had one, one valuable gem that you want to impart as a gift uh, to, to people out there who's going to be watching this, uh, that is a principle that you live by, your, your philosophy, just one of those, what, what, would, what would it be today? I always say, dare to dream. Dare to dream. Yes. You know, I always say, dreams keep you awake. Dreams don't put you to sleep. Yes. Um, dare to dream. Don't be afraid. Um, have a go. That's it. Simple. Very simple. Have a go. Too good. I want to thank you again for no your worries, time, right? Big us for this. And um, yeah, we finally got you here. You finally got me here, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm always around, like I say, but yeah, no, I really appreciate it. I, I, I love our conversations. Me too. Very inspiring. Uh, and it keeps, like I said, I'll, it keeps me going. So, really appreciate it. Thank you. Big us no Thank you, Ron.
Well, there you have it, people at Powerverse. You heard it from Chris Anderson, Mr. Chris Anderson, our, our great brother. So much knowledge, so much value, so much gems. I hope you got a lot of value out of this as as I did just sitting in this session. And um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and supporting us every week here on Powerverse. Uh, it's been a pleasure and a privilege. And I am your host, the Golden Mike from the North, Balamao Power, signing off saying, stay inspired, stay empowered, stay connected. That's all.